Um, hello, friends. Hello, new guests. Um, hello, everyone at home. Um, hello, friends in Vienna, even. Uh, so grateful that you are here with us this morning. Um, and I'm so grateful. My name is Insil Kang, and it is a privilege to be with you here today and to spend some time with you. Just checking. OK, thank you. Um, even before the little sound mishap, I have to say, it was taking um, every, it is still taking every ounce of my self-control not to just hijack our time together and just start catching up with every single one of you right now from this podium. Um, I, I just, I didn't realize that Zuli was pregnant. I didn't even think about it. I met George today for the first time. Um, I saw that Kaylee's here. I just so many people, but again, I'm not going to do that. I can already hear right now uh, Gordon Landon telling me to stay out of trouble this morning. I can hear Dave Palo joking that I needed to not speed through the lobby to slow down. And I can definitely hear my brother Ernie Ka teasing me about where and how I parked this morning. Every Sunday he does this to me. Being in community together is such a gift, even if it includes all these uncles and brothers in our lives who show their love through teasing. In my culture, we refer to community members with the same role titles that we give blood family members. This gives church membership a very real and personal implication in our lives. And that is actually quite related to where we are today in our sermon series, A Defiant Nevertheless. We've been going through this letter from Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi together, a letter of pastoral care and encouragement to continue living out their faith lives with joy in spite of life circumstances, and continue, uh, in, and in spite of the realities of unthinkable hardship and difficult times. We remember that theirs was an existence of physical persecution for their faith and oppressive Roman rule. Sorry, I had to do that. Last Sunday, Pastor Mauricio and Pastor Aleda preached on the meaning of Paul's urging of the church to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure that this is our testimony of love, that our lives are a continuing walk of sanctification, the practical experience of our personal relationship with God, resulting from our obedience to his word. As we covered two weeks ago with Pastor Paul, this chapter begins with the command to be of the same mind, church, not to be in agreement with each other for the sake of false harmony, but to be in the same mindset in Christ, a discipleship practice to be in genuine harmony with each other as Christ-likeness is more and more shaped and refined in them to follow after Christ who made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. And last week, again, Pastor Mauricio also asked us, in light of, our, of, of, of working out our salvation, the continuing active work of our faith in action through obedience to the word, how different our lives would be if we only had that same mindset that Jesus had. So this brings us to today's passage, where Apostle Paul brings up very dear people in his letter. He writes of two people, first of Timothy and then of Epaphroditus. I want to remind us that this is a pastor's letter of encouragement and love to his church. With that in mind, let's read how Paul mentions first Timothy, as Paul was planting and visiting the early churches, he met Timothy, uh, a well-respected believer with a faith that was passed down through the women in his life, his grandmother Lois, and then to his mother Eunice. Paul was very impressed with Timothy and had him join in his mission, mentoring and discipling him himself, coaching and encouraging him when sent to offer pastoral care to the church in Ephesus. Timothy is someone Paul invested in, working and living out their mission side by side. Theirs is an intimate and trusting, deeply trusting relationship. So let's read together what Paul says of Timothy now to the church in Philippi. I hope in the Lord to send Timothy to you soon so that I may be cheered by news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. 
But Timothy's worth, you know, how like a son with a father he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I trust in the Lord that I will also come soon. We see a real human example and encouragement for the church in working out their salvation with the person of Timothy. He is an extension of Paul, as we see in his reference, that their closeness is not just co-workers in the work of the gospel, but more like a son and a father, but also uh, in, a, in the pastoral love of Paul that he has for the church. Uh, there is no one like Timothy, as we see in verse 20, who is genuinely concerned for the church's welfare. Even more so to connect it back to the earlier passage in this letter, encouraging the church to be of the mindset of Christ, here Paul notes that Timothy, unlike so many others, does share in the same mindset of Christ, seeking the interest of Christ Jesus. If your personal uh, professional experience has been anything like mine, um, you can name perhaps just on only one hand, um, if you're lucky, your coworkers that you've worked with where you could give such a resounding vote of confidence and shared mission like Paul speaks of Timothy. When I think of my past work experiences, uh, mostly in places like colleges um, and related to education, I remember the feeling sometimes of secretly hoping not to work uh, with a certain colleague um, because I knew that it wouldn't be an equal share of work um, or the times that I felt like a staff member just didn't really care about the student groups that we were welcoming and hosting and how difficult it would be to trust them to host well and care well. Uh, working with these few coworkers would mean having to likely pick up extra slack or almost feeling like they couldn't be left alone um, for fear and worry of how they would be representing our school um, or the project at hand. That is a tiresome and uninspiring way to work with people. There are so many millennial uh, and uh, some Gen Z TikToks out there and Instagram accounts that talk specifically about highlighting this unique form of just soul-sucking work experience. It's a very known thing, unfortunately. But Paul refers to Timothy as a father would a son. That's an entirely different way of trusting and relating to your professional colleague. Their relationship, their trust in each other, their shared mission is so deep. More than mere coworkers, but people who love each other, can depend on each other, trust each other. Perhaps for me at least, the closest experience I have ever had with that kind of working relationship is actually my team here at Village. I love who I get to serve with here in the work of the gospel at Village. The coworkers I work most closely, closely with, um, with whom I have the most uh, frequent meetings, happen to be Ben Spots, Pastors Mauricio, John and Paul, um, Monica and Charlotte back there in the sound booth. I have worked so closely with them and have built relationships with them that I know when they are stressed, how it affects them, uh, what snacks and sugary beverages would give them true joy in Christ. Um, and even which sports teams to never disparage in front of them. I don't personally support Barcelona, but because Pastor Mauricio does, I will be good. Charlotte, if you put that photo back up, just, just a, 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 if you look and it seems that Charlotte really wasn't in Ephesus with us last sun, summer, it's because she wasn't. I asked her to please Photoshop herself in for the sake of the metaphor. But this is what we do as a team. This is how I know I can trust her to do that. Thank you, Charlotte. While, unlike uh, Paul and Timothy, while I would never, ever refer to myself as these co-workers' mothers, um, I can genuinely appreciate, though, the special meaning of Paul and Timothy's dynamic thanks to this team. Uh, they love and pastor me daily. I know how each cares profoundly about the welfare of our community and how they seek the best interest of our community, how they do embody the way of Jesus in their ministries. Can we just thank them real quick? I know many of you thank them regularly and there's so many more to thank, but just naming the ones that you'll see all across my work schedule every single week, that's all. We can trust how each other would actually love our village community and that's a very strong bond, this team. 
in times of personal hardship, these special people that I just named have shown the love of Jesus to me. They have cared for me, me and my family in prayer, in action, and in words. Um, and our entire leadership team at Village really uh, is like that. It's not something to be taken grant for granted, and it's definitely something to write home about. What's very clear then, and the receivers of his letter would recognize, is that Timothy is not a substitute sent to check on the church, but a much beloved family member going ahead to first care for and love and encourage the church before Paul himself can join them to do the same. So let's read on. Still, he says, I think it is necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and coworker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need, for he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him then in the Lord with all joy, and honor such people, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. Here Paul is talking about one of the Philippians' very own Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus is one of their own church members, someone well-loved by the community. He was chosen by them to represent them to send a gift to their dear pastor Paul, who was in prison. He was their extension sent to Paul, someone they felt would be the, rest, the best representation of their care and love that they have for Paul. They would be able to trust not only that Epaphroditus would deliver their gift, but that he'd do so and say all the things that they would have wanted to say and do if they could be with Paul. So again, like Timothy, we see how Epaphroditus also lives out the example Jesus gave us of sacrificial love, as he became sick even while serving Paul in prison, almost to the point of dying. We read how much he also meant to Paul, as Paul mentions the additional grief he would have felt had they lost Epaphroditus, the shared grief with the Philippian church. More than a mere colleague, Paul calls Epaphroditus a close, dear brother and fellow soldier in the mission of sharing the gospel. Much like Timothy, who shared the mindset of Christ, Epaphroditus is also concerned with the heart needs of the church. Dist distressed because he heard that, he, uh, that you knew he was ill. He is an example of someone working out their salvation towards Christ-like humility, that of a humble servant who would risk his life to show the love of those who sent him. And again, more consistent to his pastoral love for the church, Paul says that he is more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again that he himself would be less anxious knowing that the Philippians would see him and receive him again. Through this, Paul is ensuring that the church feel his love and care through the physical presence of a trusted, beloved friend who would be among them, loving them, pastoring them, encouraging them. They are to rejoice in seeing Epaphroditus to honor people like him. So asking an honest question, how do you read these passages? Are we inspired or are we burdened maybe by the words and direction Paul is giving the church? Commanded to be in unity with each other, to have humility to the point of regarding others as better than yourself, to first look out for the interests of others, to be of the same mindset of a humble and sacrificing Jesus Christ, to continue on in the life of faith without grumbling. An entire church community living this way a church like this sounds like humbling work for us, maybe some of us. Do you think that this is actually our community's culture here at Village? How well do we live this way? If I honestly examine myself, um, how well do I live this way? Because even with our best intentions, truly, in our most honest moments, we can still snap at loved ones, uh, seek what we feel is ours, 
uh, easily stand against someone rather than to adopt the compassion of Christ for them. And for sure, for sure, we grumble, grumble, grumble. Jesus understood this very well, and in his final days of ministry on earth, he does point out our human failing to his disciples. Let's just read for a moment in Matthew 16. 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed on the third day and be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. So even Peter, we see here, one of his most loyal disciples, lost sight of the interests of God, did not have in mind the concerns of God. He did not have the interest of Christ in mind, but that of human concerns, a stumbling block to the way of Jesus. But we have hope. So let's read actually what Jesus said in the verses right before this. In verse 13, Jesus asked the disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus built his church to be the key to heaven. The church is the doorway to heaven. With the community of believers, we find life in Jesus by taking up our cross and following him. The way to heaven. A sacrificial and humble way, yes. Finding our lives by losing them. This is the church's vocation. This is our ideal. And we need each other to minister to each other, to love and encourage each other in Christ-mindedness. We can be the way or the stumbling block church. So who are our Timothys and Epaphroditus's? Who can you think of? Who are the lovers of our community, the like, fam the like family members in our church? the fellow soldiers in the work of the gospel, who are like-minded and hearted to Christ. Who are they? Well, I can think of a few, um, including some teasing uncles and brothers to start. Paul reminded the church to welcome Epaphroditus with joy and to honor him. So we also rejoice in seeing these encouragers and we honor these fellow co-workers in the work of the gospel. I did mention a few names at the start of our time together, but they're just a fraction of the villagers who encourage us and take care of us through their most genuine love for each other, um, making sure that weekly details most of us never think about are covered to bless our time together as a community. From everything, uh, genuinely from our first aid kits, our health and uh, physical safety teams, our vast grounds here on campus, um, numerous repairs to our building, and even moving these seats that you are sitting in right now all through their hands. And we have so much to learn from their discipleship in action. Our multicultural church is the result of people who over decades were compelled by the life of Jesus to see a kingdom of love realized on earth. And when I reflect on who are our Timothys and Epaphroditus's, I soon realize that God is absolutely at work in our community today because we have so, so many. So let's talk about them. Let's talk about you. 
Donna and Wayne Thomas are so genuinely concerned for our welfare, whether caring for decades now in ensuring that our holy and community experience on Sundays um, are carefully and honorably executed, or actually being the extension of our love at your hospital bedside. Not all of us can go, but we send them. They are Timothy and Epaphroditus. We rejoice and honor the Jesus heart that they share and show us. We have KF members who out of shared grief and love for a fellow um, fellowship members suffering the sudden death of family overseas, committed to caring for their children that they had to leave here as unexpected international flights need to be made. They are Epaphroditus looking to the interests of others. Oh, it's going to be like that. Uh, we have behind the scenes, um, we have a behind the scenes sister uh, whose name rhymes with Jenny, not Jenny. Uh, ooh, some of you are laughed, you already know who it is. Um, and she went to every homebound senior's home that she could find in order that she could take their photos to be included in our church directory because she cares for them to be full members of our community. She didn't want them to be left out. She is our Timothy. We honor people like her. We have young Peter Gudekunst. I don't think he's sitting here right now who makes sure to greet you when he's here and ask how he can help on a Sunday. Give me a job, he says. Like Timothy, he's, uh, who learned from Lois and Eunice, Peter has learned from his mother and father. He is our Timothy. Another young villager, uh, Toa Saeki, um, had the great idea to encourage our community with a village at play group of making Gundam, Gundam models. Putting those figurines together in a, is a personal passion of his, but he wanted to share it with our church. So his group has started, and over a dozen villagers of all ages, might I add, have come together to learn for the first time or simply find other friends who love putting together Gundam models. A very unique and creative way to be community together. He is a Timothy son. We have sisters who have experienced the loss and created space for community and love for our sisters who are now living on a, a life, excuse me, on this earth without their husbands. We have villagers who have experienced profound loss um, and want to create space for others so that we are not alone in our grief. For it is God who is at work in that loving ministry, and they are our Timothys and Epaphroditus's. These are happy tears, just so you know. Thank you, Pastor Tony. <laughs> we have sisters, or chamenimder, as we would say in Korean, who sling coffee, but with the intent of creating relationships and ministry opportunities with our greater community, that customers may feel and know the love of Christ through our cafe ministry. Honor them by coming through the cafe Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, our Timothy and Epaphroditus right in our cafe. We have HF brothers and sisters, hermanos, who celebrating the home purchase of a fellow member and friend worked tirelessly to help remodel and prepare the house to truly be a home. Who does that? We are cheered by news of them. They are our beloved Epaphroditus. We have a brother who out of desire to be of the same mind as his brand new coworkers, um, signed up for Hood to Coast for the first time because they do that and physically expressed his love and desire to be in community with them that way. Ernie is also from, from Myanmar, and as he has shared with us a while back, sends love to the children there through his ministry that provides education where it would otherwise be impossible. He is one of our Timothys. We have a brother who working out his salvation daily with fear and trembling, with humility, changed professions to serve immigrants and refugees, even finding time to actually join Brother Ernie in teaching Korean online to children in Myanmar, um, another Timothy. I'm not going to say your name. I can already feel your uncomfortableness over there. We have multiple villagers who became co-workers in ministry, uh, laboring alongside us, serving alongside us by offering their gifts and talents in music each week. 
keeping the choir going through an up and down season of pandemic, um, having our worship team be something that we can all uh, rejoice alongside. We are cheered by the joyful noise of praise to God together. They are our Timothy and Epaphroditus. We have a sister, Jamenim Chuja, Chuja Jamenim, who, like a mother, spreads her love to us through her food, to seniors, to staff, to so many villagers. And when you ask her, she says she just loves it. She actually goes, I love it. And if you laugh, it's because you know her. She goes, I love it. And she's not the only one who loves and encourages our community this way. She is our Timothy. We have Hermano Antoine, who along with his family is one of the very first to arrive on Sundays. Hola, Señor. Whatever the needs are, he is there to serve us, our brother and co-worker. He is our Epaphroditus, one of many. We have Hermanas and HF, Hispanic Fellowship, who encourage each other through physical health. Did you know this? Through encouraging physical fitness and healthy diet coaching, they minister to each other a different kind of love, que hermosura. También son Timoteo y Epafrodito. We have villagers who teach ESOL, but more than just teach a language, they cultivate meaningful relationships with their students, staying in touch throughout the pandemic via Zoom, continuing to welcome our city's newest community members through friendship and care for their welfare. They are our Timothys, and they welcome you joining them too. We have Brother Roger Seed, who using all the experiences, skills, and passion that God has given him, a true fellow soldier, brought snow from the mountains so that our youth could play in it in our parking lot, kept our pastors safe with repelling gear as they launched ice cream down from the gym rooftop to kids below, and loved his friends uh, by helping them protect their family during the wild, uh, protect their property during the wildfires. We greet him with joy because he is truly our Epaphroditus. We have a sister who, along with her husband and two grown daughters, um, one is in the sound booth, are eager to serve and minister our community, but also extend love to fellow villagers, including one who was experiencing major life transitions. We love her dearly, and this sister was able to help her and encourage her in finding a new apartment, a new job, genuinely concerned for her welfare and well-being. She is our Epaphroditus. We have villagers who mobilize to meet our most basic needs in times of greatest distress, creating delicious and loving meals. We have villagers offering their cooking and baking as a way to love our community, caring for our welfare in the tastiest way. They are our Timothys and Epaphroditus's. We have the outgoing council members and advisors who in seeking the interest of our church, faithfully served in an important time of our community's history. We not only honor them, but their families as they also endured the impact of the ministry with their sacrifice of time away from home. These villagers' concern for our community's welfare is so genuine that many, while step, stepping away from their official role, have expressed their heart to stay involved in the work still to be completed. <coughs> Dale <coughs> Himes, um, including our ministry associates as well. They are truly our Timothy and Epaphroditus. We have villagers, church, who pray for us and continue to pray for all of us, truly praying for you by name, taking our struggles to the Lord, praising God for our community, whether in groups or through our responsive worship cards. Thank you for being our Timothy and Epaphroditus. We have the Doyle family, an extension of our love to the people of Jordan, who ministered and have now returned back to us. We rejoice at welcoming them back and honor them as they create new relationships with us, whether in ministry leadership um, or with their village at play volleyball group. Welcome home, Timothy and Epaphroditus. All of these people, church, all of these Christ-like-minded community members, through their love and service, through their sense of family and even sacrifice, encourage us to live out lives of faith, um, to work out our salvation, to have joy in the Lord as we live lives following and transformed by Christ. 
There are so many more stories of how we encourage each other, how we love each other, how we genuinely can learn from each other and be shaped by each other as we live out our faith. We need each other to be the church, to pick up our crosses daily, to be true disciples of Christ. Praise God for who he has sent to our community, truly. And we have more to praise God for, for we see and know that in the midst of difficult times, God ministers to us through his people. That is a major point, church. In the midst of difficult times, God ministers to us through his people. Jesus gave authority to his disciples to preach the gospel and grow his church. Paul, even though he knew he could not be with his beloved community in Philippi, he delighted in knowing the excitement and joy his readers would even have when he just hearing that Timothy and Epaphroditus were soon to be sent to them. What a needed and real encouragement while they were still learning the harsh realities and consequences for following Jesus in their time and their world when their pastor Paul is in chains in prison. When we are up in the middle of the night caring for an ailing loved one, when we feel hopeless with how our life has suddenly changed, when we don't even know what to pray for, what healing, grounding, and real encouragement we experience when the Church of Christ uh, comes around you and is praying for you sends you messages of care, and offers to help you. Praise God that he uses his own people to minister to each other. Another amazing point, we praise God for his vocation as his church. Church, all of Jesus' followers, church is the doorway to heaven. When we love and serve each other in this way, we are the doorway a way that is humble, with others' needs first, seeking Christ's interest. For the church of Philippi, when their entire world is convincing them uh, at every moment to worship their political leader, to look out for their own welfare in work and money, um, to care less for those who cannot care for themselves, Paul encourages the church still to continue to work out their salvation so that it is God who works in them, that it is the heart of God that is why we will and act to fulfill his good purpose for all people. Church, we still very much have this same vocation. Our lives of love are to be that light in our world, the doorway to heaven that is humble, sacrificing, seeking the interest of Jesus as we care for others. Our cafe, our partnerships with our city, the county, to serve our community, the ministry of our campus spaces are as much a part of that doorway as each of us loving and encouraging and serving with Christ-mindedness in our everyday, ordinary lives. And thirdly, we praise God because when we do this, when we serve, Christ is exalted. Amen. Philippians 2, 6, Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. He made himself nothing, the very nature of a servant. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. It is Jesus who gets the praise. It is the glory of God the Father that is made known in how we love. For we know that God is good, church. His promises are mercy filled and never end. He has promised to never leave us. He has promised life in him, and it is so good. He has empowered all of us in his spirit. He encourages and ministers to us now through his people. He encourages us to minister to his people. So it is really clear to me that we need each other, church. How wonderful that we are not alone. 
but we need each other. To answer the call as disciples of a servant Jesus, we need our community of servant disciples. Loving and caring for one another, welcoming each other in the Lord with great joy and honor. Having our lives changed by each other's presence and impact, welcoming life together with great joy and honor, humbling ourselves to always seek not our own interests, but the interests of Jesus Christ, the interests of Jesus who came to love and save all of us, the interests of Jesus who called us into community. We need each other in our continued discipleship call. How interesting that Paul had two co-workers ready and able to love and care for the church. More than interesting, how amazing that the church that they had, um, that for the church, that, um, excuse me, how amazing for the church that they had this abundance that was being sent their way. Church, what would actually happen? What would it look like if we all took this encouragement and of being the same mind of Christ in bearing witness to the working out of our salvation? What if we were all the Timothys and Epaphroditus's to write home about? Women and men so genuinely concerned with the welfare of others, capable and willing to be leaned on to love the community, an extension of Christ's love sent to this world. Maybe we offer joyful teasing to our community. Maybe we sacrifice greatly for our fellow brothers and sisters. However way we encourage each other and love, may we be challenged to truly think less of ourselves and instead of the interests of others. Because we are all co-workers in this work of the gospel. I pray, may we all pray, that we would be encouraged by our community of beloveds. They're so, uh, by a community of, community of believers who are also lovers, to live out our lives in and for Christ's love.